This is RAF Skillthorpe. Now, left with just a small reminder of its important role at a bomber air base during the Second World War, the place now has an eerie atmosphere. Buildings now stand open to the elements. These buildings won't be here, however, so with our unnamed team of urban explorers, we take you on a virtual tour of a selection of buildings within the former air base, explaining their former uses as well as showing you the buildings in their current condition. The team decided to explore inside one of the Z-shaped accommodation blocks. On entering the building, we find ourselves in a lobby with a stairwell to the upper floor and a choice of two long corridors. The layout of the building is symmetrical with each of the outward facing wings containing room after room of dormitories. The central section of the building contains all the sanitation facilities such as the toilets and also shower rooms. After splitting up and taking a look around, it appears that the other Z-shaped barrack blocks are in a similar condition and have exactly the same internal layout as each other. However, what did look interesting to the team was Truman Hall. Standing three stories high, it appears to have been built to a completely different design to the rest of the accommodation blocks. Constructed of brick and concrete, with external stairways at each end of the building. Inside, each floor has a single corridor running right through the building, linking the two external stairways. Either side of the corridor are mainly dormitories, each with their own storage cupboard, many of which still remain. Towards the centre of the building are the sanitation facilities and the main internal stairway. The current condition of the rooms in this building varies dramatically, especially on the top floor where the damp is starting to set in. At the heart of the accommodation site stands the NCO Club complex. This set of buildings once contained the dining hall, recreation centre and the base's care facilities. Today it is in a decaying condition, smothered with vegetation in places and floor tiles peering up from the floor. We entered through the billeting office and made our way into the large dining hall. Behind the dining hall is a large open room which is slowly being claimed by the surrounding vegetation. With much of the building being stripped of all furnishings, it's hard to distinguish the actual uses of many of the rooms. The remains of a boiler can be seen in this area, similar to another boiler, located in the plant room at the very rear of the building. The rear section of the building appears to have been used mainly as accommodation, especially on the upper floor, with a mixture of dormitories, bathrooms and toilet facilities. Outside, these outbuildings appear to have contained laundry equipment, with remaining signage and electrical fuse boxes. The northern section of the building was the recreation centre. The southern section of the building appears to have been the nursery or children's hospital with an alphabet of Walt Disney characters painted on the wall. Adjacent to here was a walk-in dispensary cupboard. Many of the other surrounding buildings have now been converted into industrial units, such as the old gymnasium and swimming pool. But there are parts of R.F. Scunthorpe which go unseen to the public eye. So the team had a very interesting visit to RAF School Thorpe. Plenty of its original buildings still stand as a big reminder of its active past and not due to preservation. 
It's interesting how some of the original buildings have since been converted to industrial use, while still retaining their external features. The control tower and runways have been kept due to the present day military activities on the base, but the future of the accommodation and domestic site, who knows?